It just it didn't. Let me see what happens if I do gallery here. Maybe I should do gallery, and it would do it. I don't know. I, all I know is all I know is last time we did this via uh, Zoom, it wasn't. It didn't go back and forth between us for whatever reason. I have no idea why. Maybe I can test it right the reason now. Reason is we're just better together. We need to do it in person. That's all. Yeah, that's probably all accurate. Right. All right, I won't take a separate recording if you think you don't. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be fine. I'm just going to use everything from this Zoom recording right here. It should be fine. <clears throat> Beach bum. Yeah, repping my boy, Adam. I'm repping that. I'm repping tree, tree guitars. <laughs> now that is a sexy tree. <laughs> Somebody, my cousin sent me his... Uh, shot was it my cousin i think it was my cousin it's like this tree it just looked like some dude taking a girl from behind basically that's what this tree said <laughs> i think you showed me that <laughs> some no, somebody oh, probably showed so it your to you cousin li- your cousin listens to this huh apparently oh yeah you know what it might have been blake that showed me that actually now that i think about it <laughs> oh Hey, tonight I've got some Four Roses Small Batch Select sponsored nice. by me. How are you uh, doing over there? I got Eagle Rare sponsored by me. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, the, the the bummer is this this is the Eagle Rare I brought to Tinley to share with you, and we just never broke into it <laughs> for whatever oh, reason. That's that's even worse. I know that is even worse. You know, well, how'd you like me, those US art videos you filmed? Those are good. Let me make it even worse for you, though. I found a bottle of Eagle Rare at Vaughn's when I was there the other day, which is like our Safeway in town, you know? Right, right, yeah. I I lived in California. I know Vaughn's. All right. Well, there's because some parts of California don't have Vaughn's. Like we got. Do you remember Lucky's? Lucky's grocery stores? And then they were taken, bought out by Albertsons. Yeah. And then they got back, bought back by Lucky. It's all over the place. Yeah. It's been bouncing back. Is and it forth. Lucky again now? It's, it's oh. Lucky again, yeah. And I like how you said Luckies like- too, because we all, used to always do that. We used to say Luckies, but it was Luckies. it's called Lucky, yeah. Like Red Robins. Um, we never. Yeah, really had- I liked I liked Luckies, and then Albertsons took it over, and they had that lame uh, radio commercial. It was like Albertsons, it's your store, and I hate radio commercials more than anything. Because you listen to some good music and it just gets you in the mood. And then there's like cheesy commercials bombard you and just destroy it on a regular and repeating basis. Oh, and then it was should... Albertsons and I did not like them as much as Lucky's. So it was doubly annoying. It was just we, should start, we should start having radio ads on our podcast. Just every five minutes, just pop in with. Uh, to be honest, our podcast probably usually sounds more like the, the radio commercials than the uh, music, but that's all right. <laughs> so anyway, oh man, how you I doing? I was trying to think of how to bring you out here for this podcast because I was like, I need more Brian in my life. Well, so <clears throat> I don't think that would have would have happened this time around, even if you did figure out a way, because. Uh, I appreciate that. I would, could definitely use more Garrett in my life always as well. So that would have been a benefit for both of us. But I've just you been... You seem like you've been busy traveling already, huh? Yeah, busy traveling already. That's the thing. I'm looking forward to most likely being within my own state for the entire month of May. That's that's my plan as of right now, is to be here for all of May. And we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. I before COVID, I traveled like so much, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to getting back to it. It's funny because when I was traveling so much, it was driving me crazy. But now that I'm not, I'm like, I want to do some more traveling. So I do like traveling. I was just having a conversation last night with a buddy, and you know, I, I spent so much time touring in the band that the road is certainly a second home for me. Like when I get out there like 20 minutes down the highway, like settle into this little home sweet home type of feeling. You know what I mean? 
So oh, yeah. No, I, I like the road. I don't, I'm not as big a fan of the air. Mm. I would be okay if they invel- invented teleportation so you could just be somewhere because I enjoy being places, not necessarily the act of going places. Yeah. Uh, so, well, there's part of, part of me does actually, en- <laughs> part of me does actually enjoy the act of going places. Like I'll, like On I said, road, like but not 20 minutes. Air. Yeah. Not, not in the air. You're just so, it's so, so controlled. You have no control in the air you know it's all up to the pilot you can't pull off whenever you want you're just stuck up there it's It's like a stressful expensive version of the greyhound bus and hopefully not stuck between two wide-shouldered dudes in the middle seat i mean that's that happens sometimes and then it's just like dude can we be done with this (laughs) please have you ever had someone like literally fall asleep on you where they're like (laughs) like cuddling on you and you're like what the heck stranger <laughs> I, there was a I was a girl that did that once i think and that wasn't so bad um but yeah th- so i, I guess mean, did you talk to the girl or did she just fall asleep and slump over on you i don't remember honestly i've been on a many i've been on so many flights dude i used to fly back and forth between here and hawaii like every two weeks uh for yeah. a long time so i've been on many too many flights to remember all of them most of them i I feel like if you were talking to someone and you were like they were your little single serving friend like fight club would put it then that would be okay but if you just have some like annoying guy that ignores your existence and then falls asleep on you and uses your shoulder as as drool pillow yeah that would i I just i I just give him a little just a little smap on the cheek and be like whoa sorry i was trying to slap the fly on my shoulder but it was you (laughs) <laughs> I did say that one. I did do that one time. Whack on his cheek. He's like, oh. oh, I thought that was a fly on my shoulder. I'm sorry. You were there for like five minutes, bro. Dude, I am I am traveling again um tomorrow, which seems crazy because I did just get back. Was that yesterday? Oh man. Oh, I'm sweating just think about it. No, I'm just kidding. But the well, the exciting <laughs> thing about it is I'm taking the train and I've taken it a couple times now. Um this time I'm definitely booking the train and not accidentally booking a bus like I did last time because the bus, <laughs> no, nothing like oh, the train. I, I did that go to your place, like booked on Amtrak and got a bus. Or something yeah. Like that. So, okay. So you yeah. did the exact something same thing, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just, oh, you yeah. got to pay attention. You got to pay attention to the little picture they have next to whatever you're booking. There's a little picture. One of them looks, they both uh-huh. look the same, but one of them is a bus and one of them is train. And the train is nice. The train is sweet. It's like smooth. Are you talking about going down to like the LA area? I'm going to go up actually because my sister's still in town from Belgium. So but they're taking off next weekend. So I'm going to get up there and get a little more time. But the cool thing about it, about this particular trip, is that Leia agreed to come with me on the train, which, which, yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's going to be our first daddy-daughter trip. Daddy-daughter date. Got to love it. Yeah. She wasn't into it at first, but she last night... When I showed her some videos of like what the Amtrak train is like, and I told her about what we could do and how we could order food and how could she how she could hang on my leg as we walk up and down the aisles and like we don't have to stay in our seats and Daddy's not going to be driving, so we get to hang out and play games the whole time. And I'll, after all of that, she was like, "All right, we'll book her a ticket." You know what? You're talking about planes, trains, and automobiles. I, I do think trains are probably the best form of transportation. It's sad that they're not like widely in use anymore. You know. It's more of like a let's take a vacation on a train kind of a thing. It's, you know what I mean? But go, going from point A to point B, like, I don't know, it makes a lot of sense, you know? So yeah. I need to find some more that come in and out of Pittsburgh, like running across over to the Philly area, which nobody knows the difference that lives outside the state anyways. But like going across the mountains and stuff, it's like a five, six hour drive. If it could be, even if it's just as long or maybe a little shorter by train, it's always way more scenic because they don't go along the same routes as the roads. So usually you're like out in the middle of nowhere when you're going on a train and you're right. It's cool to just be able to like hang out and enjoy the scenery and get up and stretch and all that. So. Yeah. And this trip down to uh, Southern California from here is real nice. I mean, it follows along the ocean pretty much the whole time. And you're going to, yeah, and you're going to all these mountain passes that you don't ever see from the car and just like all these, like, these crazy fat pads that people have somewhere like up in the cuts and the bench is like, wow, that looks like a nice place to live. <laughs> right. Uh, right. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember fun. seeing that train track whenever I go up and down to one, you know, sometimes I would take the one just to take the scenic route 
like especially if I was ever on my motorcycle when I lived out there going northern to Southern California, I'd be like, man, that train track is like way out there. I want to be out there. Yeah. There's that so, one section that goes right over the ocean, you know, right? That that one surf spot. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking that about the family trip because I because I've the la the first time I took it, at least in my adult life that I recall, was fairly recently when I went to meet Dave Kaufman up there to film like at the East Bay Vivarium and up at GX3 and a couple of places like that. Um, I went up there to meet him on the train and I hadn't done it in a long time. And I just booked a room. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, oh, I'll just book this room in the train. It's like got six beds and it's like a whole apartment on the train that's yours. So it's like perfect for if I wanted to bring the whole family, like it's perfect for that. Heck yeah. No, I don't know. I, I think it would be kind of cool. Like if I was a bajillionaire, I'd buy up some old railroads you know what I mean? That are just still being used for cargo and kind of dying out and all that stuff. Like there's a bunch right here in Pittsburgh and they have this, they do the same thing as in the, you know, in California, along the ocean, they're like right along the river the whole way. So it's cool. Cause you got the hills on one side. Cause we have so many hills that trains are hard. You're either weaving hard through hills and going up and down where you find a river where it's fairly level and you just cruise. You know, so they always grab that like riverfront property, which is why it's funny in Pittsburgh, you don't have that like prime riverside real estate because there's usually a train right there. <laughs> so it's yeah. like the river right there increasing your property value, but then the train right there decreasing it, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, but I'd buy that stuff up and, and make those like, it'd be cool to get some like retro, like new, but like retro styled trains. So they had that vintage train feel, you know, with the extra windows, like safari window style cabs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Did I tell you, like, we did a lot of shopping for our facility. Did I ever tell you about the train yard that we looked at? Uh, I think that maybe in, in passing, you you mentioned it. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm imagining, maybe I, I'm pulling it. I wanted something super weird. I looked at like a water refinement place. I looked at a train yard, even a small airport were among the the places that I looked at but this train yard had like a big empty facility now it, it it had like a steel building but it would have needed to be completely done out you know um but the cool thing was it was right at this spot it was still an active train yard right outside the facility and I was like well, that's like kind of cool for business and stuff but would sort of be an annoying in other ways but it was this beautiful train yard with like I don't know 12 tracks deep or something where they'd park all the trains so they could bypass each other and stuff. And so I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool to go buy like some vintage train cars and like put that, put out some tracks. There was this big uh, portion of really wide Creek. It was probably like maybe 30 or 40 feet wide, not quite a river out here, but it would definitely be a river if it was in California. <laughs> but um yeah, this really wide, beautiful area of Creek. And I was like, man, I should put like some train tracks right along it and park a few cars and make them out into like little Airbnb, like tiny home style thing where they could stay in the train. And then I was like, even if a train was going by you at night, you were in a train, you'd be like, this is kind of cool, right? Like be part of it. So that was one of the uh, crazy ideas that we had before we found the place. The place we're at though, it was is just too perfect. Yeah. You know, that building is like exactly us. And so we moved upstairs now. I don't know if you watch our vlog. Channel, I, I noticed. But... Yeah, yeah. I'm subscri I'm subscribed to the vlog channel. Yeah. I like how you say you didn't watch it, but that's okay. I said I'm subscribed <laughs> I to the, the vlog. subscription. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That I saw <laughs> that you guys had moved upstairs. I know I hadn't actually watched the entirety of the video that was put uh, together about moving upstairs. But um, I did notice that you you moved upstairs. You know, it, it was just the yeah. the clickbait. The clickbait. I couldn't handle it. I was like, oh, oh really? <laughs> Is that right? Super <laughs> clip. Which part was it? Oh, the one where we got kicked out. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. You watch the beginning. And you're like, you're not getting kicked out. You're kicking yourself out. Is that it? <laughs> Maybe that was I, clickbait. I just yeah. can't handle it when YouTube do you YouTubers do clickbait of any any way, shape, or form. Oh my goodness. <laughs> says brian cusco master of clickbait <laughs> how many how many videos have you put up that you're quitting youtube <laughs> only one every april's first of five in the last five i didn't do one this april first uh, oh okay well, you're behind you should do it now and be like ha, ha gotcha 
<laughs> I wanted to surprise you. I knew if I put it up on April 1st again, you wouldn't fall for it. Well, speaking of subscriptions to YouTube, I've cut you off right at the beginning when you're asking about the US Arc channel and uh, how are we going to get, I, I, I'm fully behind the idea of that channel having as many subscribers as possible just to show that, that this is how many people are in the reptile industry. This is how many people in the reptile yeah. hobby. This is how many people are keepers. This, this, this number of subscri subscribers to the US Arc channel represents the amount of people that are against any legislation that would keep from keeping that that totally makes sense and i think that i was i was discouraged a little bit because i saw that it had been shared you know i obviously saw you guys shared it on your youtube page i shared it i saw um justin shared it pretty pretty mm -hmm. immediately but, yeah, you know shared it for yeah, us yeah yeah but even, even on the posts though even on those posts like even on justin's like there was you know like 10 you know, it'd been up for like the entire day and he gets, you know, tens of thousands of views on several, a little, at least close to the 10,000, you know, regular viewership. And it's like, it's like, you know, 14 likes on the post after 48 hours or something. And I was just like, yeah, that is kind of, it's kind of sad. So we have, we just put up our third video. So it's brand new and we're just shy of 3000 yeah. uh, subs, which is as a YouTube channel, that's good. But here's sure. the thing. If you, if you figure that, U.S. Arc stands up for, you know, like, like the people whose lives would be affected if U.S. Arc wasn't around would be uh, all of Brian Barczyk followers, all of Jay Brewer's followers, all of Snake Discovery's followers. You know what I mean? Um, all, all of those big uh, YouTube channels and, and many, many that are like several hundred of thousand, you know, viewers. Um, you know, that's what I was hoping is that everyone would just pour into it and stuff like that i did personally call everyone kevin mccurley did share it as well on his uh personal instagram he mentioned that it was up and told everyone to go subscribe um but yeah it's it's pretty amazing to me like everyone talks about it you hear everyone saying u.s arc is so important everybody hey u.s arc is important but the the number of people who act on it is is crazy and it's not just the YouTube channel, it's US Arc in general. Like, you know, I've I've gotten a lot more, you know, inside information on the organization and everything since starting and talking with Phil about a bunch of stuff. And like, you know, the numbers, the membership numbers are pathetic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That like, uh, I have a very small YouTube channel for Reach Out Reptiles. Like, not the smallest, but it is by no means a big uh, a big YouTube channel. It's it's like a niche, one little tiny corner of the reptile industry, and I don't think they have they have less than ten percent of my followers would be US Arc membership. You know, it's crazy. Maybe uh, maybe it's well. I don't I don't know what to say about that particular. But I was just still thinking about the subscription number to the US Arc channel, and you know, there are have been there's has been a lot of push for us arc in the last you know several months after that bill got introduced or the potential for that language to go through on the um competes act and i mean maybe people are just numb to it at this point and they're like oh and now a channel okay <laughs> I, don't uh, I don't know the video that went up on the channel today was pretty heavy if you didn't watch it that's the one where i i ran through and asked all the vendors, as many as I could get during breakdown at Timothy Park, uh, what US Arc means to them. And it was it was pretty crazy. You could you could see a lot of people knew that, you know, that their lives would be severely affected without US Arc. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to get it out there. You know, I told Phil, like the the big thing was for us was just if somebody doesn't commit to it like everybody could contribute if they had like just randomly started their own channel and ever all the youtubers out there decided like contribute a video every now and then they could do it but if they you still would need someone to like coordinate and schedule all that stuff so i was like i'll MC the channel for the first year and commit to making sure there's a video a week up there if other people like if you wanted to make a us arc video that was relevant and ran it through phil and he thought it was cool I would definitely throw it up there. You know what I mean? That would save me one week out of the year. So 
um, you know, theoretically, there's way more than 52 YouTubers. If everyone just made one video for US Arc a year, they could run it, you know, and that'd be the channel. But, um, but you know, it's funny, I, I called all of the big YouTubers and everybody I knew talking about it and asking them to promote. And I think you will see some more stuff in coming weeks because, you know, certain people have like, they're scheduled out in advance or like they're going to shout it out, but it'll take a month before the video comes out, right. you know? Totally. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I talked to all of them. And the one thing everybody told me was like, you know, if you get a bunch of subscriptions, but have no watch time, YouTube's not going to promote your videos at yeah, all. Anyway. I, I said that same and thing to like, you. It's, yeah. It's still, well, I, I'm concluding you and everyone else, but you're like, yeah, yeah. They're like, uh, this channel's going to suck if you don't make entertaining content. And I was like, great. I was just planning to like read updates and break them down in ways that were, you know, educational that people could understand, throw some B-roll on and give the message of US Arc in video format. And now it's like, oh, you have to make it a real YouTube channel or nobody will care. And I'm yeah, like, I mean, there's, there's, there's we a lot all of, just there, like there's a lot of truth to that, though. something without it entertaining us for a small quantity, you know, because my thing was like subscribership, like I. I, don't oh, even know I know. I know what your thing was. I, I I said it like five minutes ago. I, I understand. You know, it's the number that any lawmaker can go and look at. Well, what is it? What is this group? You know, and then yeah, just see that number right there. How big is this right thing there. anyway? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Oh, two thousand subs. They don't matter. Right. So I get that. Yeah. I get the importance. Anyway. The reason be behind wanting to have a, a large subscription number, regardless of how it might affect, like you know, performance of the channel. I get that. Right. Um, yeah that and so. but the point the point is still there yeah so it, that's not necessarily the point isn't to drive a huge following based on entertaining content that also teaches you something it's more about just having a number to show somebody that yeah like you said it's not about making the channel perform optimally for youtube it's about just having yeah. something that shows a number yeah i get it yeah so I don't know. We'll we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I've I've committed to it, but kind of that that frustration or let down or disappointment seems to be the the theme of my life right now. It's just like beating your head against a rock and not getting anything done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm trying really hard to do like all these new things, and it's just like it's just energy out and nothing back for it for a, a long time now. So <laughs> getting tired. <laughs> yeah, I was but, feeling I was feeling the same just today or really, you know, as I was getting back and realizing I forgot that we needed to set up or I think earlier in the day, I was like, I wonder if Garrett remembered that we're doing this. And I thought it was going to be earlier for some reason. I was like, Oh, I forgot Hillary's going to be at work. That's not going to work anyway. So if he forgot that's convenient because otherwise it's going to try to do this with all the kids running around. <laughs> and then I realized, but then when I was on my way back here, I was like, I was just feeling dumpy just feeling like a little depressed and dumpy now i felt better after talking to you and now realizing that maybe you're hitting your heart against the wall harder than i am is also a little <laughs> that's better. always nice when you can be like my life doesn't suck in comparison <laughs> and that's what i'm here for you for brian <laughs> make your life look good in comparison <laughs> brian's uh, not that great but have you seen that garrett guy <laughs> holy crap that guy got issues <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna come over here and watch Triple B for a while because I'm just depressed. <laughs> over there and reach out, rep though. Man, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you guys are yeah. doing some do, doing some nice big moves over there, though. I mean, you know, I'm I'm sure that you you have frustrations. I'm well aware, but um, at the same time, like the growth of Reach Out Reptiles has been pretty steady and strong uh, for the last while, uh, and I mean, you know, the three tech fest coming up for you in July is seems like it's going to be a nice, nice, uh, I don't know, a piece of fruit, piece of fruit from that work. Yeah, that, that is pretty cool. That seems like it's really blowing up. So with the planning and stuff like that, it's, it's going to be really big. So that'll be a really fun way for us just to kind of celebrate the, the reptile community and, you know, it, it's super doors specifically, but not really you know what i mean like it, it will be about that but it's it's the same as carpet fest it's like just getting a bunch of awesome people together and stuff like that so yeah. um speaking of awesome people that came to carpet fest did you hear ben horton is moving to pittsburgh yeah i talked to him today actually yeah yeah i was stoked to hear that he's uh 
I think the first time I ever met him was at your house at Carpet Fest, actually. So yeah, that was here. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty fun. Moving some more reptile people out my way. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was giving. He was him... trying to move to Nevada, and he found a house. I was like, "Look at Pittsburgh." So he found a house in the in it was like half of what his price range was. That was a better house than what he was going to get for the same price in Nevada. In Nevada, and then he works at Tesla, so he looked at Tesla jobs in Pittsburgh. We have a bunch of like green energy and tech jobs and stuff. So he was able to find a job in the company at Tesla that paid more, and then a house that's mortgage is going to be like a third of what his rent is in California. So yeah. he's like, woo. And he's going to be like 15 minutes from our shop. So, and you know, he's like big into the, the retakes. I don't even know. I think he has some other reptiles, but I don't even know what else he has. It's most, but, mostly snakes um, and mostly retics, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's cool, man. Oh, you would probably know. Was he asking you to babysit while he moved? No, he's just looking for some advice on how to make the move happen with cages moving at the same time and everything. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a trick. Yeah. It sounded like he felt, based on his reply, it seemed like I gave him some good information. He seemed pretty happy about it. So, I mean, five exclamation points seems like a pretty exuberant thank you. (laughs) Well, that's just bad. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I'm so excited to have him out here. You know, he's so excited, you know. Maybe it's that, or or maybe I'll just feel better in comparison to Ben. He's so happy all the time. Maybe I'm like, oh, you know. Maybe life's not so bad. Look how happy that guy is. He lives right down the street. Can't be all bad. Oh, yep. I'm burning up a little bit. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't run today like I was thinking I would. I've just been fighting off the phlegm from this last cold I got. There's like this everlasting phlegm that seems to be phlegmy, and running definitely helps. But I didn't run today because it just got away from me. I a lot of cleaning to do down here and clutches hatching, which is awesome, but um, just a little bit behind on my training for becoming a superhuman, which is fine. You know, what's, you know what's weird? I was, you're mentioning, and I was sick about this earlier or whatever, but little sicknesses like coughs and colds and things where you'd be like, ah, in the dumps for a day or two and then back at it seem to just lag on and be lingering. And originally I was thinking like, well, I got COVID a while back. You know what I mean? Maybe it like destroyed my immune system. And everyone's like, well, no, if you got it and got over it, you should have a pretty good immune system for that disease anyway. But um, the fact that we were all shut up and quarantined for years, I bet you all of our immune systems went down because we weren't being exposed to it as much. That's very possible. If you, if you think pre-COVID, you probably met someone with a cough or a cold every single day. And like, I don't know about everyone else out there, but like I would get sick like once a year pretty regularly. So I think, uh, I think we just need to get out and lick some more dirt or something. I don't know. Dude, I am, I am out there licking dirt with the best of them. Let me tell you what, I was out there yesterday licking dirt all day long, just out there licking it. I licked dirt in Nevada. I like dirt in Kentucky. I like dirt everywhere between here and there. And I'm continuing. I wonder why you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's just part of the process, Brian. It's making you a stronger man. It's making you a stronger man. Uh, <sighs> fair All right, enough. you ready to dive deep in the shallow end? Oh, always, man, always. I still think we should change the podcast name to Diving Deep in the Shallow End. Well, we'll have to... Did you guys know that are listening? I don't know if everyone knows this or not. We have a Facebook group um, that is pretty poorly run by Matt Bernardin. Thanks, Matt. We love you. Um, but uh, you can comment in there if you think we should change the name of the podcast. I'm, I, I like the name. I don't know about changing it though. That would be too confusing. The, the well, the other crazy. Or other, we would blow other up bum- and be huge. Other bummer there is I, I, I haven't been on Facebook in like two months at least. So yeah. even if somebody was, I went there. on today and that was part of why I was banging my head on rocks. I was like, man, I don't remember why I hate this now. This oh, you went on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. Some stuff still um, was finding me. I don't, I'm still, I mean, when we would talk after about it, like I, even without Facebook, like people are hunting me down to give me drama 
from years ago. <laughs> it's like, dude, that I didn't even know about literally from years ago that I didn't even know existed being hunted oh, really? down on my personal device. <laughs> yeah, that, that is kind of funny. Like I get that too. Maybe not so much from years ago or whatever, but like the worst drama on social media, if someone's like, oh, we hate Garrett Hartle and reach out, wrap out. I, I purposely don't go look at that because you know, what do I care? You know what I mean? So you hate me. Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. Join, you know, get in line, join the crowd, whatever you want to do. Start a haters group on Facebook. But I don't, I don't want to sit there and just read all that stuff. I'd rather focus on what kind of positive stuff we're trying to do in the world. And if I don't focus on the positive, I start to get bogged down. The funny thing is friends of mine will always like screenshot stuff drama even if it's you know private messages or things that are said publicly or whatever they send so and so is talking this crap about you and and i'm like i'm literally trying to avoid all that i don't care what they say i'm not going to engage them it doesn't bother me they can hate me if they want you know what i'm saying and uh but but yeah they're they're well meaning they mean to do good and then they send me this drama and i'm like i don't i don't know i don't want to know i don't care you yeah know. i I, tell, I usually and i i generally just tell people like please don't send me that like please don't send me that stuff again I'll, I'll yeah. block your phone number <laughs> yeah yeah i need, probably need to do that more i i appreciate what they're doing they're looking yeah out. no I, I get it they're looking out for you uh, but, but they, i think that you the, you and i probably have a similar response to that kind of stuff and it's an unusual response you know you don't like, want to go engage I with it you want to shut yeah, it you know. i don't care they can yeah. hate me if they want. Totally. You know, like in principle, I don't care. And then when you dive into it, it starts to bug me. Keeps yeah, me, me too. Night, me too. Stuff. I keep it's all I could think like about. It's all I could think about. Was, yeah, it's literally all I could think about when I was cleaning snakes this morning. I was like, what the, like literally almost three years ago now. And why do I have to be thinking about this right now? <sighs> no, that's, that's exactly how I feel. And I, I was just, I was thinking about it today. I was like, how do I get this crap out of my head? Because here's somebody that I, you know, don't agree with or probably don't even enjoy them as a person or whatever. And I'm thinking about them while I'm on my day off with my family whom I love and adore. And it's like, this is bass backwards, man. I don't, I don't want that. And people will always have drama if they weren't hating on me, those same people, because some people are just trolls in real life. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. If well, they we weren't to... saying it about me, they'd find someone else to say it about because it's all they talk about on social media. They feel like everyone wants to know their toxic opinions about things. And I just don't care. You could be <laughs> toxic all over there by yourself. But in this day of connectivity, it's like, I can't unplug from it. I can't get away from it, you know? Well, my mom had this, we had this joke, my mom and I, the other day, we're at this family farm out in Nevada, it was super cool, saw a little baby lamb that had just been born, took its first steps, watched it take its first steps, and, you know, Leah got to ride a pony, I told you about this already, Leah got to ride a pony for the first time and all that, but the, my, there was the camels there, and my mom looks at me, she goes, what's the difference between a bacterian and a dromedary? And I was like, one has one hump, and one of them, you never hear the end of it. It's just the drama, drama, dairy can. I was uh, but it, you, it's the other way, though. You should say one has two humps and one you never hear the end. Of. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. That's, yeah, right. That's more correct. More correct. I know. I, I never got them. I never got them straight. <laughs> Fairly not. Fairly not. Uh, oh, the, but you're about to dive deep in the shallow end uh, before I cut you off with all this uh, talk of drama that shouldn't even exist yeah, it's pretty, that was that was pretty deep stuff so i'm ready to get deep now you ready i'm totally ready to dive deep in that shallow end let's let's go straight i want to go straight for that fireman story that i heard back in elementary school i'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you where it hurts yeah What's just the like fireman story oh just there's these firemen that would come to our class and you know talk safety classes and stuff in school and there's the one story of the the fireman who dove deep in the shallow end and you know is quadriplegic now um Oh, that's terrible. Big lift. Yeah, lift up. I don't know if it was a true story or not. I mean, I'm sure it's something that definitely obviously could have happened and maybe most likely did, but we didn't meet that fireman. We just met a, his friend that told us about it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm going to hit you where it hurts. You ready? Right, Why see. is it so funny when someone gets hit squarely in the nuts? <laughs> I mean, I I don't I don't know what the hell you're talking about, Hartle. Uh, as I'm a, not you, someone else. No, I, I'm yeah, no. By you, I say throw me the football, and someone throws a beeline. It hits me in the nuts. I pulled over and fall down. You would be laughing your butt off. Maybe if it was you. <laughs> but but there's i mean i just remember I, I, my mind immediately goes to this video we used to watch when we were skateboarding growing up called uh it was a toy machine video welcome to hell and in that video there's it was the most brutal bite it scene or you know the the compilation of of bales and wipeouts and like those ones where the guys would like fall and just go straight free ball into the bar free ball into the rail and just like nothing, like you all the the your nuts take the entire weight of your body on the rail or the one with like the skateboard up the groin, and you land on it and your legs barely don't meet, touch the ground. I remember watching those and there was no laughing. Like I wasn't laughing at all. It was like you didn't know me back then. I probably would have been laughing. Yeah, the, we didn't. I didn't <laughs> laugh. I was like, that could be me, and that looks yeah. horrible. And I ouch. I, like, I even laugh. At like if I get hurt in a stupid enough way, I'll be laughing hysterically. I'll be like, oh my god, you ever do that? Where you I mean, like don't get don't get me wrong. So bad and you're like that was so stupid. Don't get me wrong. I've definitely had my share of laughing at people who fell over or you know bit it or slipped yeah. on a whatever. And but but the nuts thing, I don't I don't know that I've ever really <laughs> laughed that much. I'm usually like, oh man, because I know the pain. You know, it doesn't make sense to me <laughs> that you would find that so funny because you sh you also should know how little uh, it takes the little flick absolutely. the little like a little uh, a oh, strong the worst breeze is those, you're talking about the farm like i grew up with they had the pipe corral between the horses and you like throw one leg over and you squeeze through this pipe corral to the other side and they're pretty narrow together so you kind of got to squeeze through them or climb over well squeezing through takes left less effort but every now and then you get your junk so, uh, like stuck on one side and you like squeeze over and it goes pop pop like being being uh palpating a boa <laughs> constrictor or something you're like oh it's like not even that much happens but you're like oh you just fall over on the other side in a pile of manure you just lay there or even as you get older <laughs> now as you get older on a, on a warm day you just sit down wrong <laughs> <laughs> i'm not as old as you but i have something to look forward to now. but see i'm laughing at you <laughs> I mean, so I understand. Why is the idea of why is other people's pain so funny? Hmm. You know, uh, it's for me. Even when it's terrible, it's funny. Maybe it's the. It's like, haha! That's not me this time. You know, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, the relatability. Like, oh, I've been there before. <laughs> Glad it's not right. me this time, right? Your mm -hmm. turn. <laughs> I told you. <ya. laughs> Just like I what you were it, saying about feel, it, feeling better about yourself after having talked to me. It's, it's like probably, that. yeah, like, right, oh, right. My right. life is great all of a sudden because you got pain in your nuts and I feel fine. It, it depends on, a thing. It, it definitely depends on who it is for me. Like it, the, the person that it's happening to, if I have a personal relationship with them or if I know them, it's going to change how I feel about it depending on my relationship <laughs> with that person. Yeah, if well, it's somebody I mean, that obviously I, the injury in the person and all that, not every injury is funny. No. But some of them are debilitatingly funny, and I don't understand why. I have almost let friends of mine die because I was laughing so hard at their predicament because right. they were dying in some unusual way. See, I, I think I'm a bit more empathetic than you, or maybe a lot more empathetic than you. <laughs> uh, I, I have I'm definitely sure true. had moments. I remember one in particular. I've told you this story where, where I, you know, I accidentally ran over my buddy the day I got my driver's license. And... <laughs> There was another That's guy with us. <laughs> that was another guy with us. And he was definitely laughing at him right after he got run over. And I was very concerned. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, how can I help you now that you're on the ground with gravel in your shoulder and elbow and everywhere? And your <laughs> shoulder is clearly not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> and, but the, the, guy oh, standing, the guy standing right next to me is literally pointing and laughing like hysterically at him. And I'm like, dude, what is wrong with you? you <laughs> yeah, I think if you're responsible for the injury. Well, no, but it was his fault. It wasn't you're like, it, oh, my God. No, I told him to let go of the car 100 times and he wouldn't do it. 
he wouldn't let go. He was on his skateboard and he wouldn't let go of the car. He wouldn't do it. Uh, we had a lot of injuries like that when I was a kid. That was a yeah. cool thing to do when we were kids. But that's a contradiction to what I was thinking while we're, while we we're talking about this diving deep topic is, <laughs> is like, if I tell somebody like, if I tell them like, you shouldn't do that, like you're probably going to hurt. You know, and, the, and then that they do, I don't know. But, but, then usually would, you would laugh. Yeah. I would think I would laugh, but maybe I'd feel. Even so that ter- reminds me, let me tell you a story and see if you see if you laugh. My friend, my, my sister used to have this friend. She was this cute little girl when we were in high school. You know what I mean? She was just sweet, cute, funny, little, like huggable girl, if you can re- imagine her. Okay. Her name is Camille. Hi, Camille. And, uh, my sister and her friends are doing something stupid. Like, I don't know if they were TPing somebody's house or something like that. They're probably 14 years old. Um, and someone that was older had a, a pickup truck and that they were driving around. This is out in the country. They're driving around in the bed of the pickup truck and TPing people's houses and getting in trouble. The cops roll up and they all panic and scatter and everyone's running. And Camille is like, you know, poor Camille is like last one out to see the cops and all that. She's chasing after the truck, the tailgate's down. She's running, she's running. Everyone's like, jump for it. It's like a scene out of a movie. She dives and her face just goes <laughs> off of the tailgate, bounces, falls back. The cops pick her up. She knocked out her two front teeth and they're like, are you okay? And she's like, <laughs> she's all caught by the cops. Her friends ran away. She knocked out her teeth, dive for a car. It was just so funny to me because she's like, oh, diving for it. Like, she's going to. Did you see that movie Free Guy where he's like, oh, and he's diving for this thing and he just misses it? No. Even if even if you haven't seen it, it's in a lot of the uh, uh, previews for the movie and stuff like that. But it was like one of those moments. So it made me laugh really hard. Apparently you're feeling bad for Camille, but I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll give you another one. We had some two-year-old horses. These are young colts. My buddy Nick used to come help me out. You know, horses with the pipe corrals and all that stuff. Two-year-old male horses get horny all the time. They, and they sit out there. They're gross. They, they, their schlongs hang out. They get big boners looking at each other. And they're like, <laughs> you know, strutting their stuff. And they walk back and forth. We used to, like, give them a little tap with the rake. Like, whack. And they'd be like, oh, pull it back up inside, you know. But, uh, like, get that thing out of my face. But one time, my buddy Nick is, uh, we had these like half barrel uh, water buckets. He's in there, he's scrubbing the water bucket out so he can fill it up. And this horse comes over and just climbs up on him, throws his front two legs over Nick's shoulders and picks him up against the fence. And it's got his dong out and he's like humping Nick's back. And Nick's like, help, help. And he's this like 1,500 pound horse, like smashing him into this thing. And he's going, ah! And the horse is like oh yeah and i was like 20 feet away and he's getting like crushed against this fence and he's screaming help but this horse just the look in his eye and the look at horrified look in nick's eye and i'm like oh my gosh he's gonna get crushed but i was laughing so hard i fell over and i was like i can't help you i can't help you i was yeah. just just go to your happy place man there's nothing that can be done just just let it happen just let it happen grin and bear it. Grin and bear it. there's no getting out of this one yeah i've i've if, definitely if laughed at something it's only gonna be worse I've, I've laughed at something like that before definitely there was a, a dog this this pit bull that looked like a great white shark his name was bubba just a freaking beast like you know one of those, one of those heads look like if you took a louisville slugger to it the bat would just break like like the one from sandlot or something right? yeah Dogs just like a that just a beast with these <laughs> massive balls hanging and our our buddy you know one of my my friends but my neighbor across the street his buddy um was over hanging out and he was kind of like tall skinny and just a little bit like he was he was kind of like it would act tough but he was also like a very i don't know how to describe his personality but he but bubba decided he really liked jeremy and he really wanted uh, he wanted Bubba wanted him a piece of Jeremy, and like he was gonna have it. <laughs> and Jeremy He's gonna was, have it. <laughs> and he literally got him. He got Jeremy down on the ground, like in the position, like on all fours, and like had it. And he was just like screaming. Yeah, I was like, get him dog, off! Right? Get him off! They get him off! To, <laughs> they tell you to like ball up and put your hand under your head. The big dog's in back. You see, you're doing that, and then he comes with something else in mind. I mean, he wasn't biting him he was just doing the classic you know i'm gonna hump this (laughs) 
<laughs> he got oh, him down on the ground. Man. He's like, dude's like six three or something, you know. And <laughs> <coughs> oh yeah that was that we, we were all dying like none of us could get off the ground <laughs> okay so we're on the same page now so why is it sometimes in some ways when people are in pain it's so funny why is that because we're sick i don't right? i <laughs> we we have we have a sickness we are us humans are we're broken we're a broken species we take pleasure in the suffering of others <laughs> that simple uh, we are sick it might be it might be when you say that though it reminds me we have like a new joke now since we started that us art channel thomas will edit a video and there's a couple like the second one was like an interview style me and phil goss talking and um and it was like a 50 50 interview and i was like dude i'm just baiting him with questions you don't need me in the video you need more phil so I would go in there and he chopped my questions down a little bit. And I'm like, no, I need more Phil. And so eventually it was like, I got a disease and the only cure is more Phil. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then he's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. But Rob and, and Joe, the older guys in the shop are laughing because we think about Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live skit. And so we show it to him and everyone's laughing. So now it's always like every time someone coughs or sneezes in the office, everyone's like, I got a disease. I need more Phil. <laughs> that, that was a great skit, man. That was that was such a good. You guys gotta go Google the cowbell skit if you have no idea what we're there's talking gotta, about. Yeah. It, there's got There's that's one of those things where it's like you don't know about that. I, I mean, if you, I guess if you're past a certain age, it was definitely. I guess we're showing our age it a little came bit. Came out before he was born, I'm sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh man, is that what happened? <laughs> we called we called Thomas 2000. I don't think that came out before the year 2000. Maybe or, or no. I mean after maybe it was no. around that time anyway. Yeah, maybe he was three years old, you know, but he ain't gonna know it. It, it might be Christopher Walken's greatest role ever. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of agree with you, and that's no disrespect to Christopher Walken. I no. just think it was great. No, that was great. Great actor, great and dancer. He's so serious in it, you know. Like, oh, you guys gotta go get it. Yeah, and the accent helps sells it so much too. Like, just his his I got delivery. A <laughs> yeah. And then, the, and then the fact that Farrell one cure, and that's more that, cowbell. Yeah. And the fact that Will Ferrell like really takes it there with the, you know, when he finally he's gives like, him what he wants. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't know. The band is like, it sounds really good. And he's just wailing on this cowbell. And he's like, I don't know, but this producer is a legend. He says he needs more cowbell. I'm going to give him more cowbell. Everyone's and, like, what is going on? And then the track too. I mean, you know, this is a great song, you know, seasons, the, the, the don't fear the reaper is a classic. And there's such an epic part in it. I mean, when that, that whole breakdown, it's just so epic. <laughs> like you, you don't expect the song to go there. It just goes there. It's freaking wild, roaring thing. But yes, but the cowbell, <laughs> the cowbell is very, very prominent on that clank, track. Clank, just, clank. Yeah, right there. It just comes in heavy. <laughs> yeah, um, excuse me. That's a great yeah, song. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I agree with you. I got Blue it. Mr. Cole. And Blue probably Cole. the cure is more Phil. So <laughs> yeah, that's the real pretty... reason I volunteered to do the US art thing. It's just because now I have Phil has to answer my phone calls. You know what I mean? He can't avoid me anymore. Yeah. He, well, I mean, maybe you should forcing be him to nicer, be my friend. Nicer guy. He won't, he never avoids my phone calls. He always answers it and acts like he was going to ignore it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm almost 40 years old and I haven't figured out how to be nicer by now. So, so I'll just force people to be my friends and then make them work like that one vlog. Read the book, okay Garrett. Now. Just read the book. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it says be nicer anywhere in it. It does. <laughs> <laughs> kind is one thing. I genuinely <laughs> love people. I don't enjoy watching them die getting crushed as they're raped or by a horse or something like that. Uh, well, okay, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, you know, well, I Phil, I couldn't even Phil is pretty wholesome. That yarn. Phil is a pretty wholesome guy. I think we can agree on that, especially when you put him on stage next to Brian Potter. But <laughs> it's a comparison thing. But again. I'm pretty sure that he would definitely be laughing right along with us or with you 
and me on the times when they're appropriate to be laughing and not those times when <laughs> some of us are just a little sicker than others yeah. <laughs> and need more. You fun. know what? I'm, I'll have to ask him because it's funny. Um, a lot of people uh, like vehemently hate us. Well, not a lot of people. There's like three people that are super loud. And hate <laughs> a lot. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like that super mi vocal minority and it's all all of them demand that usr do things but then don't support them and try to destroy them at the same time so it doesn't make any sense but um i'm gonna have to ask phil how he deals with that kind of stuff because people I think, just I don't think he does i think he's too busy no. to pay attention to that stuff well you would think i am busy enough not to do it either but it's like anytime you get a free moment like when i'm busy i'm fine but I'm not trying to like, I got to figure out how to conquer this in my head mentally, because when I get a free moment of thought, that's when all that stuff, you know, you just start focusing on different drama and stuff like that, relational things, or he said, she said, or who I'm mad at, or what I should have said. I just don't even care to think about that stuff, which is why I hate that so much about myself that I do. But and I I'm not I'm genuinely I'm sure you can attest to this I, I, I'm genuinely one of these people that really don't care what other people think about me you know like I'm I'm like oh, that's all good man I'll just do me you know I've never been one for peer pressure or people pleasing or anything like that so it's weird to me that um you know that stuff would bother me but stuff like that that would bother me i'm gonna I'm add one more thing to your plate after we're done with this zoom call <laughs> <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna tell me something about me or something about you it's about both of us so we need to share oh, it oh. oh okay sweet awesome yeah <laughs> cool. that's what i need there's me are you happy i'm laughing at your your future I'm suffering <laughs> You know awesome. why? Because it's not just going to be me anymore. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna take it in the, it's kicked in the nuts yourself. Yeah, there you go. It is. Yeah, yeah you're right. It, it, we like to watch people get kicked in the nuts because our nuts feel so good by comparison in those moments. <laughs> Must be it. Misery loves company. You know what I mean? And misery we loves it even more if misery is just over there. <laughs> and I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, we're sick. We're, we're both yeah. we're both over here sniffing in the freaking microphones like, <laughs> 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 no that one's just you i feel fine no you sniffed you've been you've been sniffing oh that's probably because i had this new hypo hypoallergenic hairless cat <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> he's in that you know, room right there hey, behind this door <laughs> you know what you should do if that's an issue for you you should get a i heard pet reptiles are great for uh oh, you know, no. hair allergies dander yeah, allergies. not if you not if they eat rodents they don't tell you about that one uh, <laughs> like oh cool snakes i'm not allergic to those let me just fill my whole life with dead rats everywhere <laughs> it's gonna be awesome do i've hashed out some freaking the last two clutches that hashed out over here just sweet just sweet what were they? one of them is sunset oh. clutch my mom's a clown clutch in the sunset clutch we got uh, killer odds was, you know it was a head head pairing visuals? so yeah visuals half the clutch is visuals on a head pairing and freaking fantastic and they're all is it and she sends us again or? and she cinnamons yeah and the, i didn't even or, get a yeah, chance to listen i got deposits on them already um which yeah. is crazy i wasn't even trying to listen to me. i wasn't going to take deposit but it's something like that though i'd take a deposit because it's pretty if somebody's serious you know well patron yeah. patrons too so um they're all they're well, I mean, if it's hatched, I don't mind taking the pause on something that's hatched. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you have it. I don't like taking the pause on something that hasn't hatched. Oh, yeah, definitely not. Um, yeah. I was even debating taking deposits at all uh, anymore, but for something like that, uh, from somebody, depending on who it is, I guess, then I'll, I'll, I'll be okay with it. Um, but oh, this clown clutch, dude, it's just there's some, some of the most just gorgeous snakes that i've ever hatched over here you're in the snake room you should pull one out i want to see okay yeah let me, let me go grab you got to talk to the people while i stand up from this chair though okay brian can't hear me oh, right I'm now sick. but i'm Ugh. i'm all excited because uh i just hatched a, a new i got a, i have a wild caught female madu 
that spread for me for the first time. And I got pure Madus. The, the, oh, I should say a pure Madu because I got one good egg. But man, it's the male and it's a firecracker. And I think I got visual anery on it. So I don't know. We'll let it shed it a couple of times before I decide. But I'm stoked on that. So baby steaks. Oh, I almost hurt myself getting back in the in the chair. The time. Oh, I got to do that again. Let's see what you got. Okay. Look at that. Hey. A blue tub. You like that blue tub? That's custom. Yeah. Yeah. Only special people get blue tubs. Man. You are special people. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to show you. We'll start with a handful. How about that? And here's the. Uh, focus, focus. I, I see spider. There's no spider in no there? No spider. No spider. Oh, that's a pin clown, isn't it? Yeah, there's some pin here. I'll show you this one. And then I'll show you the one that's my my favorite. This one probably got the most genetics from. Yeah, I like that one. Look at those side spots. That's cool. Yeah, the side spots are super wicked. I'll try and get a better shot for you instead of just me. But yeah, the... that's cool. That's like the ball python version of my Monty Tiger. I, we have named Tanya. It's kind of famous over. Yes, place. yes, so that's, that's exactly. Nice that's totally what I was what I was thinking when I saw it too. I was like, this one's certainly got like, looks like it's trying to be a a retic morph combo. Yeah, yeah, it does. That's nice. Is yeah. that a boy or a girl? Um, that's the other great thing about it. It's it's the entire clutch is girls and one boy. And the wow. one that, yeah, all girls, one boy. The one that I wanted to be a boy, that I was like, that would be nice if that one's a boy. That's the one that's a boy. So it's like, you know, when you hit a clutch like that. <laughs> I never that, get those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks like something from Canova right there. Yeah. Look at the sides on that thing, dude. I don't even know what that is. What is that? A yellow belly clown? There's got to be spot yellow nose? belly. There's definitely spot nose. Um, there, there might be GHI um it looks super dark i wouldn't be yeah i think that probably is a ghi yeah I think ghi it's G yellow belly spot nose huh? yeah and, and possibly else? well there, there's a possibility for extreme gene i don't know enough about extreme gene to to call that out yet it's a but there's possibly extreme gene it might be a red stripe too so that's oh, okay i was gonna say it has that red stripe look to it but i didn't know if you had that in the that's cool, man. Yeah, that snake that's is a really, really cool one. Super stoked on you know, how that here's, snake looks. This is funny. I have always loved clowns. Since VPI had the first one, I was like, other than Pied, that's my favorite ball python more. And then they just kind of fell by the wayside. Nobody cared. And then now that Canova has like developed them and shown the potential of that combo, there's nobody that doesn't like clowns. But I just love them just even on their own. I remember the first time I saw a super pastel clown, I almost crapped my pants. When I saw an exanthic clown, yeah. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, you know, dude. know what I mean? Like, this is just the coolest morph ever. Now they have all these, like, spot nose, red stripe, GHI. Those are all kind of subtle morphs, you know? Yeah. Maybe well, not the head, the head is standards, so distinct. Like, the head of a clown is so distinct. I mean, when it beautiful. pops out, you know immediately if they, then when the head pops out of the egg and that's all it's popped out, you're be like, that's a clown. Boom. Just like yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's what's great about it is it's uh, it just subtly tweaks. You know what I think it's it's kind of like or it doesn't look like it, but it works like it. In retics, the marble gene is very, very overlooked, you know, but it just tweaks it a little bit. And what's awesome about that is you can play with it hard. You know, if you have something like a super tiger they always look like our golden child always looks like a golden child no matter what you breed into it and people love golden child but it's kind of done on its own you know but stuff like clown that you can tweak for 30 years and still not unlock the full potential that's what's fun to me as a breeder yeah definitely absolutely 100 percent with you so on which that. one's your favorite was that one the GHI yeah, one or whatever yeah that yeah that's got to be the favorite i mean that's just the one that like that's the type of clown i dream about hatching and it's, that's it's, the boy that's the boy yeah yeah like and, i said it looks like something over at canova which is uh i was just over there earlier this year and that's a big compliment you know well yeah that, that well that makes sense because the the father of this clutch was my first uh canova snake and it wasn't a yeah. canova snake when i got it it's a canova snake now i guess <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense i know that makes sense to you. yeah 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 that's but, beautiful yeah. Yeah, I'm super. When, when you were gone, I was telling everyone we hatched a um, a madu from a new wild caught, and I think it's an anery. Oh wow, which is cool, and it's a male, so it's like 
at least half unrelated to a lot of my other Madhu stuff. Madhus are pretty rare in captivity. There's no real unrelated lines, but it's from a new wild caught female. So, and I think I got anery, which means if I if that's true, if it is an anery, it'll be my second pure locality more, possibly third, but I'm not talking about the third one yet. But I mean, I, I got anery in Karampa, and now we've got anery in Madhu, which is cool. The third one. It's like uh, maybe a new more for whatever, but we just got it in pure locality, which is crazy. So, yeah, look at that guy. That's awesome. I love that head. It's too dark. Yeah, the, I was trying to show you the head stamp is a bit dark. That yeah. close to the camera. So, so, so here's a question for you. I need your vote on something. All right. Every time I bring, I have kind of a lot of pet snakes around the shop now. They're uh, not super dwarfs, right? And I'm not talking about the house snakes, but like just random, like Matt uh, Bernard and we were talking about earlier, sent me over this beautiful, feisty little snow hog nose that I always liked for her personality. Now, I don't want a breeder. I don't care. Um, I love hog. I love all reptiles, like similar to you. I can find something outside and be like, this is so cool, you know? So I, I ended up like for years, I focused because I knew if I ever got another species, I would want to get into it. Now I feel like I've matured to the point where I can just enjoy an animal without wanting to breed it or do it. Just, I just like you for you. You're my girl. You're my guy or whatever. And we're just going to be buds for life. And that's okay. You're not a rare species. You're nothing that's genetic to me to contribute to anything. So I feel no responsibility to breed. One such animal is an African rock python that I picked up at Schaumburg last year. So okay. she's about six months old. I have always loved rock pythons, which is funny because I hate Burmese. I love reek ticks. I love raft rocks. Even Indian pythons are okay. Burmese, I'm like, bleh, you know, um, except for whatever reason, pure dwarf Burmese, but, but that's neither here nor there. So I've got this Afrock, rock and uh, Rob, my breeder, wants to breed it so bad but not to an Afro. He wants to breed it to one of his ball pythons or he wants to breed it to a berm and make those cat eater things because he saw a cat, hypo cat eater uh, that Salv Salvatore made, um, which are, you know, cool. Like, I'm not an anti-hybrid guy by any means, but I mean, what say you? Should I let him do it? Or should I just keep it as a pet? I mean, if it's Rob doing it for Rob, then let, yeah, let Rob let Rob have his little pet project there at the, at the thing. Why not? I guess so. I, I worry about the animals because, you know, anytime you breed, it's an inherent risk. And my value for the animal is nothing about breeding or return on investment or anything. It's just nice to have some animals that are just for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I sit down with my dog, that's just for me. You can't buy my dog. I'm not going to breed my dog. It's just a companion. So I have a few reptiles that are like that. And he wants to breed it and make something cool and do something with it, uh, you know. So I'm I'm a little uh, I'm a little torn. I'm not anti hybrid, you know. Well, um, if, if you give him so, full responsibility, you know, like get then if this is something he wants to do, you know, give like you're responsible for whatever happens with this. What does that mean? Well, I mean, it's not like if if it died or something, I wouldn't like hey, you owe me a rock python because I don't well, I'm want. Sure, I'm sure you. I don't even but... want another rock python. I just like my rock python. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, then maybe you shouldn't. Don't even go there. You know, if you feel like that about it, and then don't uh, uh, introduce the potential for something to go wrong down that road. Yeah, I, I go back. I go back and forth with it. I do like Rob. I'm not against hybrids. I'm fine letting him breed what he wants to breed. And then when he does it with the superdorf stuff, I'm like, go get it done. You know what I mean? Get get him but, one. Get get him one. Get, get be like Christmas Christmas bonus that's a good idea that's what i should do i'll have to nobody tell rob but maybe i'll get him a rock pipe for his birthday oh man his wife would hate me though <laughs> it's, it won't say so you can keep it at the shop okay that's fair that's even better and if lisa says yeah, like okay that. bring it home then you can bring it home yeah i like that he has that giant you saw the big platinum girl Oh um, yeah, he has oh, that yeah. at his house still. But well, that that's coming. To me that's now. coming to the jeep. Yeah, it's coming to the jeep enclosure. I got the jeep 
Oh, I do got you? A Jeep bag yesterday. Nice. It's hot. It's hot. And if you guys who are listening don't know what we're talking about, it's off luck. Garrett is going to <laughs> Garrett is going to put a huge enclosure for a retake in the uh, in the first room when you walk in the Red Retro Reptiles facility. You walk in, you go into the right. And it's going to have all the displays, all the different, uh, if you haven't watched, you've or seen or heard the plan, it's going to have a different locality, uh, Super Dwarf set up, their Dwarf and Super Dwarf, every way to check out. And then the very back wall, the whole wall is going to be this one big enclosure for a big mainland, particularly that, if you watch the Triple B TV video with Rob Rausch, that big girl we're handling there is going to be in there. And the feature inside of that enclosure is going to be a Jeep, like an, like an army Jeep, right? Yes, but I wasn't going to tell them, Brian. Oh, I thought you I just, just said, said go ahead. Luck. <laughs> oh, oh, you said tough luck. I, said I thought you, you said. You don't get to know. Well, I and heard. Brian I heard. Zooms to tell him everything. <laughs> you said tough luck. I heard talk it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So that's what it is. <laughs> so it's an actual world war ii military jeep it's going to be her hide spot in the cage and i know that's see might seem unusual but uh, not if you think about the world war ii vehicles that are over there in southeast asia probably rotten in the jungle somewhere that's it the island used to be called salibs now it's known as sulawesi and uh yeah they have all kinds of military vehicles just rotting away so it's a realistic scene to find one and the cool thing about it is the World War II, like the Jeep, which like now it's the Jeep Wrangler or whatever, but like the Jeep that everybody knows was invented in the town that my shop resides in, which is but Butler, PA. So um, that's a pretty yeah, cool so, tie in. Yeah. So I got the town there. It's like heritage. They do an annual Jeep day where they have thousands of Jeeps just from all over the country, just fill that city. It's just like a cheap heritage pride thing. And they do these like poker runs where they drive to different businesses and stuff. So I want to set that up. So they drive to our shop. They come find the Jeep with the giant snake. You know what I mean? So all the Jeep people will be getting tied into the reptile culture and connects us with the local community, which is always a big deal for me, even though, you know, like I, uh, I mostly move there because it's outside of the crazy county that we're in which is the same as pittsburgh so it has extra taxes extra laws and stuff so there's like no zoning there and anything i just moved there for that but anywhere that i reside i feel like i should give, give back to the local community so that's just one of the ways that we want to show a little bit of like local community pride and stuff like that so um i'm pretty excited but the jeep looks awesome um so i bought it it's like this trashed old rotten world war ii jeep you know it's actually half of a jeep it's, it doesn't like it was in a field this whole time and someone picked it up for me with forks and it fell in two parts that's how bad it was <laughs> but we took the the skin of the front what i really needed was like the hood and the fenders and the front end of it uh the grill and all that and and it almost looks like uh you know like the the traditional reptile half log hides that they make yeah it's almost like that because it's got the wheel wells right there. So she could like crawl underneath the hood. And those original Jeeps, they had a super flat hood. So I want to put her basking spot on top because it's mm. like, you know how it's like nice hot metal, feels oh, yeah. good, nice and warm. So I want to give her that. And it's all sprayed like military. Someone had painted it red. The guy stripped it down and took it back to the original like military green big star on it says usa on the hood with the little stamp of willie's logo and all that it's pretty cool so yeah i'm i'm stoked it looks good he just smoothed it all out and built like a frame for those little pieces of skin to sit on so it's nothing you can drive but it's pretty cool to be like yeah i bought a jeep for my snake i just like saying that so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally man i uh Heck yeah what am i doing here i think i got a I think I have to go. We've been, have we been about an we've been a little over an hour. We're about an hour and twenty, I think, at this point. I don't uh, know, but I don't know that it matters. Well, it, it wouldn't matter, but I got I got so much I got so much stuff I got to do before I leave tomorrow. But all right, buddy. I don't I don't want I'm not trying I'm not trying to cut you off, but we we generally do about an hour and twenty, and it seems like uh, I don't know. <laughs> 
I'm good. I got my fill. Hopefully all you guys listening got your fill of Garrett and Brian talking and hopefully we get to hang out with you guys soon. And I don't know if anybody wants to do this in real life, you should join our Patreon so you can get an invite to go to Retic Fest and come hang out with us in Pittsburgh this summer. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. And I might even, right? I might even be, I might even be there too. You never know. Oh, I'm, I'm counting on it now. You said <laughs> that it might happen. So I'm, I've already yeah, planned it. Can't, can't get it, out now. it already happened as far as i'm concerned yep yep, yep. i'm gonna start telling stories about it tomorrow <laughs> remember that one time at retic fest this summer where ryan hit his nuts so hard and we all laughed oh my god oh it's a good thing he already has all his kids i don't know about that but he ain't having any more that's for sure not after that what happened this summer that hasn't happened yet Ha, 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 ha.